Amen. We're in the series called Host the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. And so you can get the t-shirts over there uh, in the coffee shop uh, to represent uh, the church, the Holy Spirit, wherever you go. Amen. Last week we talked about the importance of hiding. Instead of hiding sin, we should be hiding the Holy Spirit. Instead of hiding compromise, we say it's time to move from the secret sin to secret place. Secret place is the time we develop with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And today we're going to go a little bit further. We're going to talk about making room for the Holy Spirit. And before we go into that, I want to remind you that we as Christians, there's three levels of knowing the Holy Spirit. The first level is the Holy Spirit is with you. Somebody say with you. Turn to your neighbor and say he is with you. But the Holy Spirit is with you to lead you to salvation. Somebody say salvation. See the Holy Spirit is with every person who doesn't know Jesus. There are people who are living away from God, even atheists or agnostics and Holy Spirit is with them. And the reason why he's with them is to convict them of sin and to bring them to Jesus. Are you with me? How many of you even before you came to Christ you had moments in your life where you felt the presence of God? You turned on a random K-Love song or somebody shared something, a Bible verse showed up. You were a heathen. I mean you were lost. You were going to hell but you felt the presence of God and it wasn't drugs. It wasn't alcohol. It was the real presence of God because the Holy Spirit is with us to lead us to salvation. Somebody say amen. Secondly when we receive Jesus the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. Somebody say in me. Turn to your neighbor and say he's in you only if you're a believer. He comes to live in you. Why does he live in you? To develop a fruit of the Spirit, to develop a character, to, to change you, to make you different. Amen. And then there's a third experience where the Holy Spirit comes to live, to comes upon you. Somebody say upon me. Somebody say upon me. He comes to live, he comes upon us and that is for service. Disciples received the Holy Spirit when Jesus rose from the dead and Jesus says receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them and they received the Holy Ghost. But then he says, he says not many days from now the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will receive power. Now the tongues came as a, as a side thing. And the tongues wasn't the main focus. The main focus was power. And the power wasn't to give us a charismatic ministry. It's to give us power to be witnesses. Because many people speak in tongues 300 miles per hour but they don't actually witness to anybody. And there is no power in their life. And so the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for power. Somebody say power. See the Holy Spirit comes to live, it comes upon you. And so, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to have the Holy Spirit come upon you. What does it mean practically? If you have a Bible, let's go together to the verse in the, in the Old Testament. And as most of you know, I love to preach from Old Testament because the Old Testament is Christ concealed. The New Testament is Christ revealed. The Old Testament is the shadow. The New Testament is the substance. And many times you can look at somebody's shadow to determine a lot about the substance. And so we're going to look at 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 9 and 10. This was a very rich woman and she was noticing the prophet walking by and this is what the Bible says. She said to her husband, look now I know this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he passes, he, whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. Somebody say amen. And so I want you to see something that happened is number one, he was passing by her all the time. In the verses before it says that he would come in for a meal. So the Holy Spirit is with us. He was passing by. He came in for the meal. He comes in us and then he decides to actually live in that house because he had a room. He comes to live upon us. And so we see that very beautiful imaginary in the scripture. How do you make a room for the Holy Spirit? And this picture is a beautiful picture. I love images. It just works better with me. And Jesus likes parables too. Um, the bad part about parables is you take, you can't take every single thing and find some kind of a meaning. You have to take a big picture and bring it down to earth. And secondly, I want you to get away today, not with being uh, just enlightened, but being transformed by the Word of God. Amen. How do you make a room? For the Holy Spirit in your life. How do you allow the Holy Spirit to take more of you and for Him to take, take possession of you? And I'm going to give three simple examples 
from the room most likely that you have and that we have set up here the bible says the woman set up a bed for the prophet in order to make room for the holy spirit the first thing that you have to give or the first thing that you have to place is a bed meaning a bed speaks of two things rest and intimacy right you hang out with your friends in starbucks but you don't sleep with them amen you go and drive a car but you don't sleep in your car chair because a bed speaks of intimacy and a bed speaks of rest why is that important because your intimacy with God is your place of rest uh, if we clap we clap we don't clap we don't clap <laughs> let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ yes <laughs> it always better somebody starts and so if somebody starts just help the brother out everybody just kind of go with it otherwise we don't start and stuff if we start we finish it amen um, bed speaks of intimacy the bible says in corinthians that the love of the father the grace of jesus and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you fellowship of the holy spirit meaning as god loves humanity and jesus shows grace through the cross the holy spirit has a gift to humanity and that gift is fellowship in greek in original greek the word fellowship for that is another word for partnership intercourse distribution and connection or communion it's a word that's not just used for a chit chat it's a word that's used for what couples do when they are in bed that means holy spirit is not just interested in being a theological subject on the shelf of your doctrine he wants to have a relationship and not just any relationship like you have with a thousand two hundred friends on facebook where you don't know them but you're their friend but actually closeness with you in other words he wants to have that place of intimacy with you he wants you to talk to him he wants you to hear his voice and he wants you to understand him and to live with him and the benefit of intimacy with the Holy Spirit is the stress gets removed from your life over 30 percent of people in the United States currently are taking antidepressants depression is rampant in our culture stress is rampant in our culture and Jesus said to Martha Martha was a woman who was worried about many things and Jesus says you are worried about many things I'm in your house and you're still stressed out but one thing is needed one thing is needed Martha when you keep missing the bed anxiety will be running rampant in your family my friends in order to overcome stress and anxiety you have to raise intimacy in your life with God you have to go from knowing God as just the God of the universe to knowing God as an intimate friend talk to the Holy Spirit spend time give make a bed make room for a bed in your schedule make room for a bed in your calendar carve time to be with the Holy Spirit talk to him because he wants to talk to you develop that intimacy to make room for the Holy Spirit first speaks of intimacy number two the Bible says not only she had a bed in that house but she also had a lamp a lamp behind the bed beside the bed there was a lamp the lamp the Bible says in Proverbs that the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord your spirit you're made of three things the body soul and spirit your spirit is the contact point for the Holy Spirit when you make room for the Holy Spirit you make room for intimacy with God meaning you spend time with worship you spend time in his word you spend time connecting and communicating feeling his love and sending the love to God but the second part of making room for the Holy Spirit is that you have to make room in your spirit for the Holy Spirit to speak to you Holy Spirit is not going to always use your pastor he's not going to always use your circumstances or use an audible voice he will use a lamp and that lamp is your spirit your spirit this is your spirit the reason why many people don't hear the voice of God is because their spirit is anchored in Netflix and Facebook instead of the scripture this cannot produce light if it's not anchored in a socket 
there has to be a stable socket that your spirit goes on and you gotta go deeper in that place because see if I just simply put it on like this and I get a one verse a day showing up on my bible app it's not going to produce light but when you go a little bit deeper somebody say go deeper when you go deeper in the word of God and God's word goes inside of you and then you got this little wire called prayer life that's connected to the spiritual world something happens the word of God becomes alive and God what he begins to do is he begins to speak to you using the word of God and using your spirit and he begins to guide you many people always say how do I hear a voice of God before you talk about hearing God's voice make sure you have a bed and secondly make sure your lamp is in a socket make sure your spirit is anchored not in your emotions not in what prophetic words somebody gave you dreams and visions but in the holy scriptures that the holy ghost has written come on somebody are you with me church i want you to see this how to discern the voice of god i'm gonna give you just practical three steps number one compare it always to the bible anything that you hear anchor yourself in the scripture the Holy Spirit will never contradict the Holy Scriptures. Say this with me. The Holy Spirit will not contradict the Holy Scriptures. If you feel led to start selling drugs to profit the kingdom of heaven, not the Spirit of God is speaking to you. I need to leave my wife because I found somebody on Facebook and uh, the old flame came back and God wants me to have more happiness. The devil is a liar. You're hearing a spirit but it's not the Holy Spirit. It's a familiar spirit, lying spirit, lustful spirit, arrogant spirit, bad spirit, but not the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? The second thing, how to discern the voice of God is we cultivate intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Instead of praying, Lord, I want to hear your voice, you should be praying more, Lord, I want to know you. When I got to know my wife better, now I can discern her voice in this room from all of your voices. When she calls, I can understand. When she calls, why? Because I know her. Your goal is not to learn somebody's voice. Your goal is to get to know somebody. As a result, you will learn their voice and you'll begin to discern their voice. And number three, you always want to check with your mentors or your spouse if you're feeling led to do something that might uh, put you on the street with a placard that says, help me with finances. Like people sometimes get led to sell their, give their car, their house, go on the mission trip, quit their job and go on the streets and evangelize. Anything that involves giving more than $50, anything that involves giving more than one hour of the Lord, anything that involves that, you always want to check with your mentors or your spouse. Are you with me? Because if you don't check with them, you will get in trouble and you will be calling them. Help me out brother you will call your wife and say hey i am in jail do we have any money saved up any secret thing that you have under your pillow why to bail me out because you will get in trouble it's very important to check when samuel heard the voice of god but he wasn't sure he went to eli and say i'm hearing voices eli says go back to sleep he came back he says i'm hearing voices again he says go back to sleep and a third time eli said when you hear that voice again this is what i want you to say and the Eli taught him to discern the voice of God. Sometimes God will put mentors or your spouse to really help you to discern whether you're hearing voices or you're trying to build a testimony for your future ministry to impress people with some radical things that you did that God did not lead you. Are you with me? Somebody say intimacy. Somebody say the voice of the Lord. And then not only he we have a bed means we make room for the Holy Spirit we make room for the Holy Spirit in our mind to hear his voice discern his voice and we always anchor ourselves in the Word of God not in our dreams not in our visions and not in prophetic words we anchor ourselves in the Word of God and through the Word of God comes the light of the prophetic dreams visions and all other amazing things but the Bible says the third thing the third piece that she has provided is she provided a chair a chair speaks of witnessing not a pulpit but a chair a chair speaks of intimacy with the Holy Spirit has to lead to hearing the voice of God hearing the voice of God has to lead to evangelism or it will lead you to becoming weird have you met spiritually weird people who went so deep that they drowned 
who went so deep that you're like they should you're an alien you don't belong in this earth you're weird you're like you make Christianity look bad but they're getting into these higher levels of celestial spirits and celestial planes. They can tell you if Adam had a belly button or not. They can even tell you if how many angels can dance on the top of a needle. They can tell you all of these spiritual, spiritual mysteries. But after you get to know the voice of God, God doesn't want you to be weird. Because your goal on this earth is to be a salt. Not to be some weird substance that nobody else needs. Your goal in this earth is to be a light. I mean you provide dark, you, you remove darkness from people's lives. Your goal on this earth is to be a witness to people not just become weird that people run away from because you're so spiritual. And to avoid that you have to have a chair in your intimacy with God. See some people only live in bed and they don't develop, they cultivate the, the voice of God. And then there's many people who simply keep these two but they don't make room for their life to become a witness to their friends, their family, their neighbors, their co-workers and their colleagues. Another thing that we love to do is some people actually love to hide in the bed so they don't have to sit in the chair. We live in the generation everybody's coming out of their closet maybe it's time for us to, us to come out of it too. We shouldn't be hiding behind Christianity. Are you with me church? And I know some of some of us in here today we're like well I don't want to shove my Christianity on my friends. Nobody's talking about shoving it on somebody else's throat. You know yesterday I got a haircut and my beard got trimmed. I went to this place called Paul Mitchell and it's a school where they train uh, people to cut hair. They have this amazing deal. It's $50 for six months of unlimited haircuts and trimming of your beard. Look amazing. <laughs> Interesting. I went in there yesterday. By the time I got out I already posted on social media and I told five people I became an evangelist for Paul Mitchell just in one day. I wasn't shoving nobody else's throat. I was sharing a secret. Brothers, you can save money. Finally get your wife that purse or those shoes by cutting back on the money you're spending on shaving and the money you're spending on getting haircuts. I wasn't shoving nobody's throat but when you're excited about something you want to share not shove. It comes natural. Jesus had to command people not to share their faith with other people. He says don't tell anybody and they would go and tell everybody. Christianity is about sharing not shoving. You have to understand if we as Christians keep our faith private we're not being a Christians. It's easy to hide behind ministry. You know there was these guys in the Bible who were the priests and the Levite and as they were walking by they saw a hurting man but they were so busy to do church service that they actually didn't have time for the hurting man. So many times we get so wrapped up in church activity we actually forget to be a Christian. We forget to actually the Christianity is about witnessing to people about the love of God. I'm not talking about dragging people. I'm not talking about bribing. I'm not talking about condemning people. I'm not talking about screaming on the top of our lungs. I am not talking about being you know a person that nobody wants to be. I'm talking about creating opportunities in which you share what God has done to you. Why you go to church on Sunday morning and some people say well you know what a Sunday for us is as a family as a family uh, day. We don't go to church on Sunday. Really? It's not a family day. You're watching TV, they're watching TV, the kids over there are killing other people on the TV and you're over there watching benching and Netflix. That's not a family. It's a Netflix day. For us it's a family. All the family comes to church. We as a family serve God. It's a family activity and we show to our kids that God is number one. Yes we don't spend a whole day in church but we spend that hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes as a family in church. You want to be a witness of your faith. Can somebody say amen? This week I you know I hear constantly news every week we hear now reports of people who are being touched and honestly sometimes healed and even delivered of different things around the world through our ministry. This week I heard a testimony of a, of a young lady 29 years of age, four children, was ready to give up and her life. Didn't want to live, wanted to leave her husband. Somehow stumbled on YouTube on one of my sermons. And she said, I've been benching on that. I wake up now listening to that. And she says, my life is dramatically changed. Don't want to kill anybody. Don't want to kill myself. I'm alive. 
a lady from Philippines writes down and says can I ask for your permission we've been watching the messages from hungry generation and I want to stream your messages in a remote area in Philippines to a Filipino a Filipino people 50,000 people that this radio station will reach and for me it's easy to say wow I am doing great things people are getting saved every Sunday and then go about my normal life and see hurting people and say I'm so busy ministering in the church I don't have time for you I can't be a pastor forget to be a Christian you can't be so busy at church that you forget to be a Christian outside of the church you know somebody calculated this that if Jesus had 132 contacts recorded in the New Testament six were in the temple four were in the synagogue but 122 were on the streets on the lakes on the mountains I mean the majority of Jesus' ministry was not done in the synagogue or it was not done in the temple. That means that Jesus wants you to exemplify the power of the Holy Ghost. Not just when you're sitting there and say, oh Holy Spirit touch me. And not just saying, oh I just hear the voice of God. I have revelations. But when you get out of that place and you go to the gym, you go to coffee shop, you go to a movie theater, you go to work, you go to school, you go to college. Whatever you go that you provide a chair. Some of you will say, but I can't preach like you. I said a chair, not a point you you can preach you don't have to preach you can talk chair is not about preaching chair is about connecting so what does that mean practically I mean how do I go about it I, I will share with you three things pray for the impact when we pray for souls here I want you to pray for the people that God will use you to make an impact you pray for the impact number one number two live with intention that means when you go to work, when you go to school, when you go to gym, when you go to a coffee shop, when you go anywhere you go, you live your life with an intention. Have, be like a pencil that's sharpened. The only pencils they can draw are those who are sharpened. Have your life have purpose and focus. And it's not only to get a diploma. It's not only to lose weight. It's not only so well, I'm going to a restaurant to get meal. Don't just, that's not the goal. Your goal as a Christian in this life is to reflect Jesus. And his goal was to live and die for the lost. So secondly, live with an intention. And number three, and this is the big one, make room for interruptions. When people interrupt you, don't see it as interruption. It could be divine appointment. Man, I'm convicted of this myself because what's been happening for me lately because of people kind of know our ministry now is that almost everywhere I go, people come up and say, hey, Pastor Vlad. And I used to feel like, oh my God. I put a hoodie on, put the glasses on, didn't shave for like three weeks. I'm like, they won't recognize me. And I'm like, man, they're interrupting me. I'm on the run. I gotta go. But I realized that the Lord has been throwing fish actually right at my feet. And I'm stepping over it and keep praying to God at church. Lord God, send souls. God's like, how much more I can send? And if you see them as an interruption instead of divine appointment. And I used to be living with the assumption. <laughs> I used to live with the assumption that if they, they call me Vlad, that means they're Christian and they see me from another church. And this is what I found out. A lot of people sometimes who would call me Vlad, and this happened this week, numerous times. Hey Vlad, good to see you. And I'm, I've never seen you in my life. People stalking me. This is weird. This is not right. And I'm like, that's it. I'm not going to Gold's no more. <laughs> and I got convicted to go back to those people and say, hey, what is your name? You know my name? I don't know yours. That's not fair. And begin to start a conversation. And this is what I found out. Most of those people are unchurched. They've been watching our stuff on Facebook for weeks and months. And actually for them to call out Vlad, they're hoping that Vlad will say something back and invite them to church instead of see them as an interruption. I've repented a numerous times for being the priest who runs to the ministry in the temple and steps over the real ministry of people who are on the side. Real ministry is not what I do right here guys. That's, that's, real, that's ministry for me on Sunday. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I don't stand behind the podium nor do you. But each person has an opportunity to have a chair. You're cutting hair, somebody's sitting in a the chair, they're talking about their problems. You're drinking coffee, you're striking a conversation with the barista about how Donald Trump sucks and all of this stuff. You're talking about this and that and North Korea. The North Korea wants to meet with our president now. What did you watch the Black Panther? What did you think about it, man? Wakanda forever, Jesus, hallelujah. And so you're, you're talking about all of these things. All of these things. 
but God wants you to go one more step further don't assume people will be thrown off if you ask the question hey do you do you follow God do you go to church hey can I tell you something that happened to me about three months ago you know I grew up in a religious home but I actually never connected start going to church God really started to change my life you don't have to preach a Shakespeare's Charles Spurgeon message behind a podium you can have a conversation with somebody sitting on your chair invite him to church and you can see their life change the Holy Spirit don't limit the Holy Ghost to the bed and the lamp because he wants to be also in the chair meaning he wants you to begin to witness more and for those of you who walk around and say I'm not that kind of a type of a person I'm not an evangelist I am not talking about being a street evangelist I am talking about when you find a cure when you find a deal when you find a discount for something when Bath and Beyond has sales or clearance and you tell all of your girlfriends when you found a place that they do something for free or something you quickly become an evangelist so stop saying you're not an evangelist it's just you need to find something good to be evangelizing about not just lotions haircuts and shoes and purses and cars and houses those things are good but we reflect Jesus and Jesus went to save the lost and disciple people are you with me last piece that I want us to look at right now is the table the table she set up the bed the bed speaks of intimacy intimacy produces rest she set up a lamp a lamp speaks your spirit needs to be connected to the holy scriptures and then God begins to guide you and lead you through your spirit which is in line with the holy scriptures and it doesn't contradict your spouse or your mentors and then the chair the chair speaks of don't make your spirituality go deeper make your spirituality also go wider in reaching out to people who don't know Jesus be conscious of that live with that you know instead of just asking the Lord oh I want to activate all of my gifts the ones that you have activated use them already to help other people don't be weird awkward but be a person that's approachable be a person that's connected be a person that reaches other people I'm not saying maybe you're coming to our church honestly for the second time maybe you come into our church for the third time and you say I'm not sure about inviting people to this church it's not about inviting people to this church first it's about being a Christian it's about being a follower of Jesus Christ and the follower of Jesus Christ reaches out to those who don't know Jesus I have to do that you have to do that actually we get to do that amen amen and the last one is a table a table is used for many things a table is used for eating a table is used for planning but mainly tables are used for work tables are used for work and what I'm talking about right now is miracles. I genuinely believe that when the relationship with the Holy Spirit, when we become, become intimate and aware of the Holy Spirit, we will become more sensitive to His voice. Our heart will begin to yearn more to live our life, not just for ourselves, but to live our life helping other people in the way that we can. We may not be able to do it like someone else. We may not be able to be as effective as someone else, but we will do something to sit and to connect with people that God puts in our way. But there is one more facet that is as important as all of these three and I believe this is the final and the most important part is miracles. There has to be a proof that the Holy Spirit is working with you and this proof is miracles. To be able to walk with the Holy Spirit and not experience supernatural is like getting into pool and not get wet. It's impossible. No one who comes in contact with Holy Spirit can avoid supernatural. The challenge that happens is that many times mentally because of tradition we reject the table and we don't allow the table to be in the room meaning we limit the presence of the Holy Spirit to comforting our soul. We limit the presence of the Holy Spirit to just emotional experience which is great. We limit the presence of the Holy Spirit to getting insights into His Word that is awesome and we limit the Holy Spirit to saying you know what use me to make an impact on other people but the Holy Spirit is not wanting to stop at the chair lamp or a bed. He wants to get to the table. He wants to put out some plans and he wants to begin to create something that he is able to perform not just you and this is exactly what happened to this woman's life she housed the prophet she gave him the table the bed and she gave him the chair and something began to happen is that the prophet started to create a miracle this woman she couldn't have children for that day and age not having children was a huge disgrace it was a huge mockery it was really bad actually it was meant you're accursed but somehow this woman decides to live with it. She probably seen the doctors, nothing worked out and kids, having kids, over 58 million people in America not only had kids 
but since the Roe versus Wade they actually haven't have had them on accident and they got rid of them this woman couldn't get naturally what came naturally for some people there are areas in each one of our lives right now where things are not working for us but the same area is so natural to the rest of the people around you like for you to get married will take a miracle for other people to get married it's it's it's, it's easy as drinking water for some people here today to get out of debt it will take a miracle of heaven kind of like splitting of the red sea for some people here to be out of debt is as natural as breathing air never judge someone because they're expecting a miracle in the area you're not even lifting a finger I remember when Brittany testified a few weeks ago how she got a breakthrough somebody paid for a flight ticket and to her this was a miracle I'm sitting in the back of my mind I'm like a flight to Texas that's not a miracle but just because it's not a miracle to me just because it comes naturally for me to get a flight to Texas and to her it's a miracle miracles are actually preferences yes there's a miracle of healing of cancer there's a miracle of that but there are miracles honestly where you're looking at that and you're like that's not a miracle because it's not a miracle to you but there are areas in your life where you need a miracle and that very person you're making fun of has it naturally we all have areas in our life where it will take a miracle and other people get it natural never be embarrassed of those areas you know what those areas are room for miracles make room for the Holy Spirit in your schedule make room for the Holy Spirit in your mind make room for the Holy Spirit in your social life in here I have a news for you your problems already have made a room for the Holy Ghost for a miracle hallelujah if you got a problem the Holy Ghost got room if you don't have problem he has no room where to move he can't do healing with someone who doesn't have a sickness he can't give breakthrough in finances for somebody who is doing great financially. He can help somebody get married or stay married for whom it's very easy. When you have a problem, the Holy Spirit has an opportunity. Hallelujah. I love this story because the prophet comes to this woman and he notices her problem. And she doesn't say her problem. She doesn't say, yes, I need a child. She says, I'm fine. And he says this. He says, you have a limitation in your life. And he says next year you will hold a child see when you honor the Holy Spirit give him space in your schedule space in your spirit space in your social life sometimes there are things in your life you won't be even praying for that he will say because you took care of me and my kingdom you sought first my kingdom I'll just add things What does he do? What does Holy Spirit do? He puts an expiration on your limitation. He takes your the area of limitation that you've been hang, hang, hanging around with, area of your limitation that you've been eating from, area of your limitation that your mama, your grandma, everybody in your family has in the pantry of their life. That's normal actually for people to be divorced in your family. That's normal for everyone to have diabetes. That's normal for everyone not to graduate from high school. It's normal for every person not to own a home. It's completely normal for everybody to drive always things that they don't like to drive but because they can afford anything. It is normal and it's with these Girl Scout cookies that you guys been eating. It's been a family thing and it's completely normal until the Spirit of the Living God comes and He says I will put an expiration date on this and as of right now these have expired you see but it was normal until I came into your life but the poverty was part of my life it was part of my lot until I came into your life because I am Jehovah Jireh and I am El Shaddai I am Elohim and I am Jehovah and I can do more than you can I am your God I want to tell somebody here today that your poverty has expiration date and it expired the moment Holy Ghost came in. I want to tell somebody here today diabetes has an expiration date it expired the moment Holy Ghost came in. I have a word for somebody that depression has has an expiration date the thing that you're still eating has been expired. 
No, 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 no. Not because you took the medicine and your insurance is covering the medicine, but because the Holy Ghost came in inside and He says, I will give you an expiration date to your limitation. Come on, somebody. You have an option. You can still, I have these three items. They're all expired. Some is like 2014, some is 2015. How many volunteers do I have who would like to test these? Nobody. And I went through, I asked a friend of mine to go through the pantry yesterday. And they did this about a few months ago and threw away a lot of stuff. But they went through it yesterday again and they found like this one was expired in 5517. But it was still standing in my pantry. How many things you're still allowing to live in you? live in your bank account, live in your emotions that the Holy Spirit says because I'm with you they're no longer needed and if you keep taking them they'll make you sick. Today I have a word for you. Throw things away that have expired. Tell the depression you're expired. Tell that sickness by the stripes of Jesus I have been healed you're expired. Tell the tormenting spirit at night, say, because the spirit of the living God lives in me, you familiar spirit, your spirit of fear, your spirit of depression, your spirit of bondage, your spirit of death, your spirit of laziness, your spirit of lust, your spirit of homosexuality, you have been expired. And I kick you out in Jesus' mighty name. Are you with me? I want you to see that when he gave her the expiration date, he didn't bring the child supernaturally. The child didn't just appear. What happened is the Holy Spirit gave a jump start and then the woman conceived. It wasn't a supernatural child. It was the fact that he helped. He didn't intervene. He initiated. Many miracles the Holy Spirit wants to do in our life, in our, in our career and in our finances is not going to be an invasion. It's going to be initiation. Initiation means he jump starts and you take on from there. Meaning the plan that you have, the application that you fill out, the degree that you have at home but nobody's hiring in that area. Holy Spirit just touches that area and the rest of it just the history. And many of us, we don't need the Holy Spirit to come and do everything. We just need a little push. We just need a little touch because one touch of God's favor could do more than years of your labor. And that's what we're looking for today. Just one touch. Holy Spirit to breathe in my way and then the grants and scholarships will come in for me to finish college. For Holy Spirit to breathe in my way and the business plan will take off and there will be contracts and there will be connections. Holy Spirit to breathe in my way and all the places I applied will be start calling and I will get a job that I want. Holy Spirit to breathe in my way and the papers that you cannot acquire. It's impossible for you to get papers living in the United States. You know it was also impossible for Israel to walk through the Red Sea. It was also impossible for Jesus to walk on water. It was also impossible for Jesus to rise again three days later without brain damage. It was also impossible for Jesus to multiply bread and feed thousands of people. It doesn't prove that the Bible is not true. It proves that God is God and He lives in you. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.